a watershed film in the history of transforming actors into unhuman characters, was the 1976 adaptation of The Island of Dr. Moreau. One of the creature creators was John Chambers, whose work on Planet of the Apes prepared him to turn an entire cast of actors into beasts. Are those creatures, what are they? You go back to the compound, that way. Chambers, makeup artist Tom Berman and their team designed overlapping makeup appliances to allow for maximum facial flexibility and expressiveness. The makeup for each animal-human hybrid character was so exacting and complex that it required more makeup artists than actors to get ready for filming each day. We had four and a half hours in the morning and then during the day sometimes we'd add a character here or there. And on some of the characters we had two people working on it and some of the characters one person could handle, depending on how extensive the makeup was for that character. The film's numerous action scenes made the makeup work even more challenging. Doing makeup is like painting watercolors in the rain. You know, it's a matter of time before it starts to fall apart. Island of Dr. Moreau had not only working in the uh, humidity, but they'd be fighting a tiger, a full-size real tiger. And so they got pretty messed up. You just cross your fingers and hope that the appliance lasted. And there was a time when you'd have to step in and say, we can't shoot this longer. You have to stop. The work of Smith, Chambers, and Berman set the standard well into the 1990s. Then, master makeup artist Rick Baker unveiled his alien antagonist, Edgar Bug, in Men in Black. Oh, listen, monkey boy. Compared to you humans, I'm on the top rung of the evolutionary ladder. So can it, all right? Baker took an innovative approach to Edgar's makeup, utilizing silicone gel-filled appliances, which are more translucent and lifelike than the foam latex versions used earlier. So it does all this neat crinkly stuff because he's supposed to be this dead, dead skin, this bug wearing a dead skin. So we kind of give him a nice loose skin look. Baker also designed appliances for actor Vincent D'Onofrio's cheeks and eyebrows. Detailed coloring and texturing were added on top to give the skin a rotting appearance. Basically, none of the face was his face, and, and we, the beard stubble wasn't his. So, I mean, after you know, gluing all this stuff down and then putting this silicone gel-filled neck on and then putting the gelatin pieces on him, and then so many steps. Finally, a layer of latex was applied. Baker carefully tweaked the substance with tweezers to create the character's peeling, decayed skin. A pair of sinister contact lenses and a set of crooked dentures provided the finishing touch. How you doing? Good to see you. Rick Baker's artistry and ingenuity resulted in a delightfully decrepit screen star who could upstage his human counterparts. And Edgar Bug rewarded his creator with an unprecedented fifth Oscar for special effects makeup. I've won! It's over! You're a sucker! <laughs> <laughs>